Physics Notes, Unit 17C. The main thing here is resonance. It's kind of the third thing on here. Uh, so I'm going to circle it. Resonance is the kind of the central idea in all of what I'm talking about right now. But let's talk about natural frequency. Natural frequency um, is the frequency that requires the least amount of energy to maintain. That's the definition. But basically, uh, there are some things that have nice natural frequencies. Tuning forks. Well, I mean, basically all in musical instruments. Like, like, take a piano. If you hit any key on the piano, that's the frequency of that string. It, it, it depends on how tight that string is, how big that string is. You know, on a piano, there's what, whatever, 60 or whatever strings. Uh, you know, a guitar has five strings, but then you change the length by where you put your put your fingers at. That changes the string into a, basically a different length of string because the length of the string also controls its natural frequency, the note that you're playing. So how tight the string is also changes the frequency. Like when you tune a guitar, if you tighten up the string, the frequency gets a little higher. The size of the, the mass per length of the string, like thicker strings, have a lower frequency. But there are things that have a nice natural frequency, and they usually have to do with musical instruments, pipes, a pendulum. We did pendulums already. Pendulums, depending on how long they are, they have a period of a pendulum. It's 2 pi times the square root of L over G. All right, that was unit 16. Um, so the longer the pendulum, the bigger its period. Okay, uh, and the the lower its frequency. They have a natural frequency to swing. Pipes, pendulums, tuning forks, you know, they're made to have, like if you have a uh, tuning fork that's 256 hertz, whenever you hit that tuning fork, it's always 256 hertz. That's its natural frequency. There's a lot of things that don't really have, a, you know, there's things that don't really have a natural frequency, like tissue paper, paper in general, blankets, pillow. I mean, people, I mean, you don't really have a, a nice natural frequency. You really want like a, you know, something that's a musical instrument. Okay, but there are other things, constructed things like bridges. I'll talk about bridges in a few minutes here. Bridges, this this bridge down here, a famous bridge, Tacoma Narrows Bridge, collapsed because of this particular phenomenon. I'll get to that in a few minutes here. But buildings have a swaying frequency, and when they build tall buildings, they have to test that to make sure that that natural swaying frequency of a building isn't going to be tuned into a frequency of, say, an earthquake. I'll come back to that. Like, for example, a forced vibration could be like an earthquake for a tall building. But a forced vibration is when you push something. A good example of that would be like when you push your kid on a swing. When you're, when, if you have a child, eventually if you have children, okay, most you don't have kids yet. Um, but, or when you were a child, you had to have your parents push you. Because at the period of that, that swing, you haven't figured out yet. You can't pump yourself. Okay. Eventually you figure out how to pump yourself. You, you tune into the natural frequency. And once you figure it out, or your parents figure it out, you have to force it to vibrate. You have to get into rhythm. You have to get, that's a great example of forcing it. Because if you don't swing or push at the right rhythm, you can't get the swing to swing. You can't get the swing to resonate. And that's the nature of resonate. When you force something to vibrate at the natural frequency, you get a large amplitude or a large effect. Okay. The effect you want with a swing is you want to push it at that, you want to push it at that rhythm. That's the natural frequency for that pendulum. A swing is a pendulum. For example, here, these are pendulums that are hanging. Like if you were to swing this, uh, numbers one and four would resonate. Number four resonates with number f number one. Only those two, because for a pendulum, it's, it depends on the length only. It doesn't depend on the mass. So those two will resonate. They will swing and easily affect one another. They will swing at the same natural frequency, and they can resonate with one another. It, it, this term, resonate, also just makes sense in the English language. If you resonate with somebody, that means you're tuned in, you have the same kind of thoughts, and you're in step with them. That's basically what resonate means. All right. So I'm going to show you a video or two here. Uh, and one of them will be on this bridge collapse because of resonance. It had a natural frequency of sway that matched the way the wind was blowing. It's, it's incredible um, that this bridge collapsed. But let's, let me show you a couple lead-in videos and we'll talk about resonance. So this is going to be resonance with two identical tuning forks that are attached to a box that helps amplify the sound so you can hear it. And then there's a microphone. There's a lot of hiss in the background here, so hopefully this turns out. But I'm going to turn this on in a minute. But 
the idea, once again, is kind of like musical instruments. You have to have a big box, like a guitar or a piano board or something like that, that amplifies the vibrating strings or the columns of well, columns of air and tubes. That's a little bit different. But any any instrument that's got a string on it has to have a box to amplify the sound of the string. So let me try this. They're going to hit. What they're going to do is they're going to hit this one tuning fork, whatever the frequency is. I don't know, 300 hertz. And and the boxes won't be touching each other. But this one will be hit, and you'll hear it. But then it'll start the other one up just because of resonance. Stop that one, but you can still maybe hear it in the background. The other one was still going. Because when they resonate, it doesn't take much energy to get the matching fork to vibrate. And that one's obvious. You hit that one. That one's on as well. All it it wasn't hit by the mallet. It was started up by air particles hitting it. Little tiny air particles because it's resonating. So now they're going to change. Hang on a second here. They're going to change the frequency of the second fork. So now they won't. Now they don't resonate. So they're off by a few hertz. And my video, my internet's not doing too well here. So the second tuning fork won't start up now with the first one. But if you play these together, you're going to get what's called beats, which I will explain in a few minutes here. Hopefully this internet will come back on. So that, so they're not resonating now. They're two different frequencies. One's like 300, one's like 304 hertz. They don't resonate. You can't start one up with the other. But if you play them together, you'll get this... Whoa, 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 whoa. Listen. Okay, so that whoa, 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 that was, that was beats. Okay, loud, soft, constructive, destructive interference. So, I'm going to talk about beats here in a minute. That whoa, 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 but just to recap the resonance. Uh, going back to this diagram with the pendulums, they re these two resonate because they have the same frequency because of the same length. And you can have two things that are, like for this bridge. The bridge has a swaying frequency. Well, the wind has a blowing sort of frequency that kind of matches that. Like I mentioned before, you could have an earthquake that has a frequency that matches the sway frequency of the building. They do a lot of model testing before they build tall buildings now to make sure that doesn't happen because you don't want your building to fall over with even a small little earthquake, even though there's not much energy. Because it doesn't take much energy when you have resonance. It doesn't take much energy to do drastic things. Like, how did you start up that second tuning fork? The way the second tuning fork started up is because of little air particles hitting it, because they were in the same frequency. Another example of that would be the, the famous breaking a wine glass. If you, like, if you tap a wine glass with your finger, it has a nice natural frequency as well. If you could sing that note and sing it fairly loud, you can break a wine glass. You can, you can go online and find different videos of that. I'm not going to show that right now because I want to show the Tacoma Narrows Bridge video. But, uh, but breaking a wine glass, with a note that's sung at the natural frequency of that wine glass, you can break wine glasses with sound waves matching that resonant frequency. Let me try the Tacoma Narrows Bridge video here. All right, resonance and the Tacoma Narrows Bridge, the old bridge, they built a new one. I actually was on a new one last summer. It's in Tacoma, Washington. It goes over Puget Sound and um, the state of Washington, south of um, Seattle. But this was called Galloping Gertie. This is a, there's a bunch of videos. You can go and watch 10 or 20 videos on Tacoma Narrows Bridge on YouTube. This is colorized. It was in black and white originally. But, um, so in 1940, and I believe the, I don't know how long, it was up for three or four months, and it got this torsional resonant mode. You can see it here. It's, it's This is steel and concrete. So it's a suspension bridge, so it's made to sway a little bit, but this is drastic. 
and it somehow the wind the way the wind was blowing and it's somewhat complicated but now they do wind tunnel tests to prevent this from ever happening again to any kind of suspension bridge because it's a very expensive mistake here as you will see the bridge collapse here's a guy who got stalled on the bridge he's walking off he got he got off safely i guess uh, his car did not and and uh, there was maybe one dog that was killed in this thing which was sad but no no nobody got killed because they kind of saw this coming it was doing small amounts of this in the in the weeks leading up to the collapse but it's resonance so just it wasn't you know it this is steel and concrete that was twisting twisting because of the way the wind was blowing and they didn't factor that into the resonance of this bridge and you'll see it here in a minute collapse hopefully soon I'm gonna keep playing it and it's getting I think it's starting to collapse yeah you can see it collapsing there in the background but um, catastrophic, catastrophic. But they built it. They did wind tunnel test, and like I said earlier, now they do wind tunnel tests for a lot of things, not just for aerodynamics for cars to get better gas mileage, but also for like the swaying frequency of buildings. Wind tunnel test, earthquake frequency test for swaying buildings. All right, I'm just about. Done with this. I'm going to watch just a little bit more and watch it fall into the. Okay, here we go. Collapse of the center span. <clears throat> Only a center. Sp so I guess it was November 7th. Oh, there it goes. And it's probably still laying in the bottom of that river. Maybe, maybe they went down and cleaned it all. I don't know. But they did rebuild this bridge. But this was an expensive lesson in physics and in resonance. All right. Back to beats. So, just a couple more comments on resonance. This is a picture of resonance, like the two tuning forks resonating with one another. That's how the first tuning fork makes the second tuning fork start up, because these represent air particles. The air particles don't transfer. Once again, the wave is not the particles transferring from point A to point B. It's the vibration, these compressions. And these compressions, these air particles, all these little dots here represent air particles hitting the second tuning fork, starting it up it doesn't take much energy to start up if you're resonating if you have the same natural frequency as the other object and then it, so then beats and we talk about beats we're not talking about the rhythm of the music like ba bump ba bump ba bump ba bump we're talking about interference pattern and it was in that previous video when we had the two they had the two tuning forks side by side at the very end when you change one so say one was like 440 hertz the other one's 437 hertz right i think i used 300 and 305 they're close in frequency in order to resonate you have to have the same frequency like 300 and 300 they have to have the same frequency so that they resonate with each other one can start up the other or you you hit that particular rhythm for a swing or a pendulum you have to have the same frequency but if you have for sound if you have two that are really close the what you heard you can go back and rewind that if you want. It was like, woo, 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 woo. What that is, is loud, soft, loud, soft, loud, soft. It's constructive interference, destructive interference. It's a rhythmic interference pattern when they're close frequency. So it's not the actual rhythm or timing of the music. It's the loud and softness. So it's alternating constructive and destructive interference. Musical instruments can be tuned using that concept. Maybe if you've been tuned a musical instrument before, if you have beats, you're not in tune with the other instrument. If you uh, get rid of the beats, then you're in tune. And this diagram down here kind of represents beats. I'm not going to do Well, we can do the math on this maybe here. We'll see. I'm going to go back up here. I think we will do the math. There's a, little, um, there's a little practice. So this represents beats. This bottom pattern is the summation where the two waves are interfering, and this is the actual pattern. So we have individual waves. You put them together, you get an interference pattern. That is, this one's constructive where, the, where it's really tall. It's loud and then soft then loud and then soft now I'm gonna down at the bottom here and I don't know why they put it I don't know why they put the two right here but I'm gonna call this time to say one second this is two seconds here two seconds and then three seconds for example I could do this on a, an exam too like the red wave what is the frequency of the red wave all right well what is the well frequency for example for the red frequency of the red this is a good example problem from a, a graph if I go for the, like, I'm calling this two seconds right here. This line right here, they have a three there. So I'm going to get, I'm going to get rid of this for now and just call this a two seconds. 
there's a reason why they put a two there, but okay, we we'll call it. That's the two second mark, and then this this would be the three second mark. Three seconds. Okay, on the horizontal axis. But if you count the reds, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, there's eight waves. Okay, the frequency is they, they have eight waves in two seconds. So the frequency of the red wave is four hertz. All right? If you look at the green one there in the two seconds, if you go from uh, trough to trough. So I start over here on, on the zero time. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So for the green, I can change the colors here. So the frequency of the green, there's seven waves. So they have a close frequency in two seconds. So for the green, from the graph, it's a 3.5 hertz frequency. We're going to call the red one 4.0. 4.0, I should have put that there to begin with, 4.0 .0 hertz for the red. So they're close. They're off by a half a hertz. So here's the, here's the deal. First of all, okay, they're close. We would say the beat frequency here is 0.5 hertz. If you go back up here to the top, okay, the way you get beat frequency, and there's a question or two in the homework, it's real simple, simplest thing there is, is just subtract the two numbers. The beat frequency is the difference. So the 3 hertz if you up here will be three hertz our beat frequency down here is 0.5 hertz so beat frequency I'll, have to, I'll do it like this f sub beat is 0 0.5 hertz all right now uh, up here at the top three hertz three the, the beat frequency for three hertz that'd be like Whoa, whoa, whoa. There'll be three of those repeating loud, soft, loud, soft per second. This one's 0.5. This is the one we have around here is 0.5. Now, if you check it out, okay, if you check out this pattern down here, if you look at the top of this, this one right here, which is at one second, and you look at the top of this one over here, it's at three seconds. That's only, that's only one cycle from loud back to the very loudest again. So that's one cycle in two seconds. Okay, that's one cycle per two seconds. That's 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 our wave frequency I went from this large peak to the next corresponding large week so if I look at it at the graph at the graph itself the beat without doing the computation over there on the left or by subtracting the 4.0 minus 3.5 I have basically one cycle I have one cycle of the beat pattern in two seconds it takes two seconds to get from the top of this to the next top of the next corresponding repeating loud part of the beat frequency. So if you do the math there, that's 0.5 hertz. So that's, that is consistent with, so consistent with the subtracting of the two that I had over here, the beat frequency, which is how I did it just by subtracting. That's how you normally do it, just subtract the two. You can go way, way, way back up to the top here. I have another example of that. Sorry to make you a little dizzy here. This is another pattern of two that there's no numbers on here, but this would be loud, then soft. It's loud, then soft, loud, then soft. I'm told that you can hear up to maybe 10 hertz of a beat frequency before it blends together and you can't distinguish. Okay, if it goes woo, 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 that's like a one beat frequency. If it goes woo, 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 it's like a three beat frequency. Um, so that's an example of my sound effects, which are. Not always real good, but I think you get the idea there for the beat frequency. Oh man, a lot of scrolling here, a lot of notes. Okay, and kind of the last thing, but uh, semi technical here. Uh, so, resonance. Basically, all musical instruments work because of resonance. The strings resonate with the um, at different lengths and tensions, and then they make the body of the, the guitar or the piano board amplify the noise or the sound. Or in air columns and tubed instruments, flutes, cellos, uh, trumpets, whatever, saxophone, the air resonates inside those tubes. We're only, uh, there's a whole bunch of ways to analyze these. But you get these standing waves. So we're bringing back to standing waves as well. So going back to, here's standing waves on a string. This represents strings and different fundamental. And that was the video I showed you with a guy with a slinky swinging the slinky back and forth at the different harmonics. You have the fundamental, I told you, I said it looked like a jump rope. 
where you have an anti-node. You go back, back and look at the, the definition. An anti-node right here and two nodes at both ends. All string instruments do some of this. They mix all this together, though, on a, on a more subtle or smaller scale. But you know the strings vibrate when you pluck a string on a guitar or anything or, or rub it with a, with a violin uh, bow. It makes that string vibrate. So, so here we have the first overtone. It's called the second harmonic, third harmonic, fourth harmonic. All right, when they all mix together, you get the timbre, the, the overall richness and sound of, of a string or a particular instrument that has these standing waves all at the same time. Now, bottom line, these also look like sine waves if you go back and do the mathematicals. We're not, well, we're going to do some math here, but we're not going to get into the, the rigors of the sine wave function. But we're going to do some math here in a minute for these standing waves. You can, though, you can reduce all standing waves to string patterns, even though in pipes, in pipes, and we're going to focus on pipes that are open at both ends, because pipes over here that are open at both ends have the same mathematical analysis as a string that's attached at both ends. The one that's more difficult to do is a pipe that's closed at one end. We're not going to do that. There are some examples in the book if you want to know how to do pipes that are closed at one end. They're a little bit more challenging. But let's just go through the basics of a pipe that's open at both ends. And, and you can keep, we'll do the first three, and you can, you can just follow the pattern for fourth and fifth harmonic. Um, what's a little bit, well, what's a little bit difficult is that if I go back over here for the string on the right-hand side, okay, well, I just, I'll circle these two. So the fundamental... The fundamental is called the first harmonic. That's that's simple. That's your fundamental. And you have your overtones, your harmonics above that. What gets a little bit difficult is the way they, and I don't know who started it off this way. It's just the way it turned out. But this pattern here is the second harmonic, but it's called the first overtone. I guess if you think about it, it makes sense. But So you can get confused sometimes if you're talking about overtones down here. This is the third overtone, but it's the fourth harmonic. And we may ask you about like nodes and anti-nodes, like this, this string right here. How many anti-nodes do you see on this string right here? There's three anti-nodes. And there's four nodes. One, two, three, four. And basically what this represents, the blue and, and red represents where the string would be would be vibrating back and forth. Or like the slinky you saw in that demonstration, one of the first videos I showed it, uh, I think in 17A, the 17A notes for... Uh, uh, standing waves. I think it's the last part of that that video of that note 17a. So, um, but if you look at this, there's a lot of patterns here. You know, it starts off with an one anti node, then two anti nodes, three anti nodes, four anti nodes as you go to the fourth harmonic. So there's a lot of patterns there. But the same thing is basically true for pipes. It looks a little bit different, but it's the same math. You have the first harmonic, second harmonic, but the second harmonic would be called the first overtone. So be careful of that if, as we do the problems. But what's important here is this. I'm going to circle it. The wavelength for the first harmonic, and it's true whether it's a string or a pipe open at both ends. It's a little bit different for a pipe closed at one end, which we're not going to do. But there's half a wave in here. Over here, this is half a wave. Half a wave. So if you don't understand why it's a half a wave, well, bottom line is uh, the, the one that's easiest is the second harmonic, the first overtone, like this one right here. I'm going to highlight it. That's one wave. Like the look at the red part. If I go from here up and down, that's one sine wave. Okay. In other words, each in this particular second harmonic, which I'm kind of highlighting right now, each little anti note here is half a wave. Each time you see like this football shape, so to speak, it's half a wave. So down here, there's three and a half. There's uh, one and a half waves. Each of these is because uh, the wavelength is changing here as you go along. But each like from here to here is a half a wave. Each little lobe, each little football shape is a half a wave. So we have three halves here. Here you have four halves. So you have two full waves. Like from here to here is one wave. So if I draw a line right there, oh, I'm doing my pen. So if I draw a line right there, I'm going to circle it. That's one wave. That's one wave right there. And it's another wave right here because each of these halves is each of these pieces. I'll circle it in green or something like that or blue. This is half a wave. This is half a wave, so a half plus a half is a whole. So this up here is half a wave. I'm going to erase all this. That's half a wave. It's a different wavelength than the other ones, but every time you see that shape, it's half a wave. It's also, if you look carefully at the pipes over here, let me erase all that. If you look at the pipes over there, okay, um, that's also, like if I extend this out, if I go out further with this, and I'll put a dot there, I'm going to erase this as well. 
go out and out. Okay, that makes a full wave. Okay, because each of these would be another quarter wave, but um, visually, if you write it all out, that's half a wave. It's the same as the strings. You really don't even need to know that. All you need to know from a from a um, analysis standpoint is what I'm going to circle here. If you don't understand why it's a half a wave. All right. So, whoops! I put those back in there. I want to erase those. Okay. So the thing that I've circled in red over here, I'll circle it twice in red. Oh, that's blue. Okay. Back to red. Okay. This is the important thing right here. I'll just keep circling it. So the second one is this. So here's the thing. This, the things that I'm circling are the things that are important. Okay. When you have the first harmonic, whether it's a string or a pipe, we're just going to do pipes though. The length of the pipe, L. The length of the pipe, L. So you're going to have L, length of pipe, is half a wave. In other words, the, the wavelength is two times that length for the first harmonic, always. In the second harmonic, there's one wave in there. It, the second harmonic really is equivalent to this right here for the string on the right. It's one wave. So the wavelength is the length of that pipe or would be the length of the string if you were doing string problems. That's one of the easiest ones, the second harmonic. And you'll see a pattern here. Uh, I'm going to, I'm on the left hand side, how I normally do it, this is equivalent. If you solve for L, if you solve for L, you would get L equals one half lambda. In other words, if you take this circle I have here on the right, this I'll circle it again on the right. If I circle that, solve for L, you get L, there's one half a wave in that pipe. I'll, I'm going to erase all of that right now, though, and I'll circle it again. But that circle that I just circled there, this circle right here, is the same mathematical equation as this one. I like to use this equation. It's the same equation. And then the second equation is that L equals lambda. But that, that's lambda 1. This is lambda 2, different wavelength. L is the same. It's the same pipe. We're using the same pipe here in this problem. And then in the third case, L equals, if you do the, if you do the math, 3 halves lambda, lambda 3. All right? And if you look at this mathematically, or pattern-wise, what happens here is in the first case you have one half, then in the second case you have two halves, and you have three halves, and the fourth one would be four halves. Four halves is two waves. You can see two waves over here. I already circled those a few minutes ago. There's two waves there. But bottom line is, all you really are going to need to worry about for yourself are these circles, that are, these three circles, these harmonics. Or the fourth harmonic would be... Um, well, it'd be uh, two thirds. It'll be uh, two over one, two over two, two over three, two over four. So in the, in the next case, it'll be lambda four. Lambda four will be two over four, or two fourths, or one half L. All right, and the next one will be two fifths. So for lambda five, it'd be two fifths. Once again, if you solve that one I just wrote down there, you get L equals 2 times lambda, 2 wavelengths. So let me show you how this works out. Once again, it's obvious that you're doing these problems. It'll talk about pipes. It says a 63 centimeter long tube or pipe open at both ends. Once again, we're only going to be do, doing pipes open at both ends. Room temperature 20. So oh, we have to figure out the velocity. If you go back and do the velocity equation, it's going to be the velocity equals 331 times the square root of the temperature um, which is 293 over 273. Okay, that top number, because you have to convert this to Kelvin's. 273 plus 20 is 293. So if you do the, if you calculate the velocity of this wave, velocity, I think I did it earlier. Did I do it? I don't know when I did it. Hang on a second here. Well, I mean, I should have known the answer. That's room temperature, 343 or 344 meters per second. But it says, in this case, what is the fundamental frequency? Okay, what is the fundamental frequency? Well, these are wavelengths. Fundamental is the first harmonic. Fundamental is the first harmonic. Then you have the second harmonic. So you're going to just plug into V equals lambda F. So this brings back our basic equation, V equals lambda F. I got V here is 343. And we're looking for the frequency, but the wavelength. Now I gotta go off to the side here. I'll go back up here. I can go to that circle. 
the wavelength, I'm looking right up here, the wavelength is 2 times L. Wavelength is 2 times L. So I'm going to do that calculation. Lambda for the first harmonic, for the fundamental, is 2 times L. So lambda 1, wavelength for this first harmonic is 2, and it tells me the length is 0 0.63. 0 0.63, that's in the problem there, number 5. So the, the wavelength for the uh, fundamental is 1. 1.26 meters. 1.26 meters. I believe that's correct. So I put that in there for 1.26 times the frequency. That's frequency one. It's the fundamental. Frequency one comes out to be, I believe, hopefully I did this right, 272 hertz. That's the fundamental frequency for this note in that pipe. Okay. Now the velocity is not going to change, and I'm going to do lambda two, All right? That, so I just did part A. A lot of space here, so that was part A. So part B, the velocity doesn't change, so I'm just going to do I'm going to do v equals lambda two times frequency two. I could have gone back over here at part A. That was lambda one. Lambda one was 1.26 meters, but lambda two, go back up here, right up here. Lambda 2 is the length of the pipe. The second wavelength for the second harmonic, okay, is the length of the pipe. The velocity is still 343. The length of the pipe is 0.63 times the frequency 2. That's the second harmonic, first overtone. So the, the second frequency here comes out to be 800 and, no, not 800. It's 544. 544 hertz, 800. Do the math there, 544 hertz. What you're also going to find is that that's actually twice the, the fundamental. That's what happens here. It's twice the fundamental. I need to erase this so I have space. So part C, part C, once again, it's just going to be V, same velocity, equals the third wavelength times the third harmonic frequency. So the third wavelength, though, uh, it says lambda 3 is 2 thirds L. Lambda 3 is 2 thirds times the length of the pipe. So you can do that first if you want. So it's 2 thirds times, what, 0 0.63? 0 0.63. So lambda 3 is 0.42? Yes, 0.42 meters. So that's going to be, oh, the, the, I'm going to plug in the velocity. The velocity is still, I'm going back over here to see is 343 times equals the 0.42 times the third harmonic. And it comes out to be, that's the one that's 817, I believe. Or 816. 816 or 817. I'm going to three sig figs here. Because what you're going to find is that F3 is three times the original. Three times 272 is 816. Uh, so... The, 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 the harmonics are just multiples of the fundamental. It's a little bit trickier with pipes that are closed at one end because there's a, some, some of the harmonics you kind of have to kind of skip. But you don't have to worry about that. We're just doing pipes that are open at both ends. And if you did strings, it'd be the, it'd be the same math. But you don't have to do strings either. I'm just telling you, if you want to do strings, you can. All right, so part six. Uh, what length should a tube be to produce a second overtone? Second overtone. Now i got to be a little careful here. Second overtone. Second overtone, that's the third harmonic. So that's where you gotta get, you gotta watch out. That's this one right here. Well, it says it over here by strings. It's the second overtone, third harmonic. So we're using the lambda three equals two thirds L. So we're using lambda three equals two thirds the length of the pipe. And we're gonna do V equals lambda F, V equals lambda F. So it's lambda three, frequency three. Okay, it's the third harmonic. And we get, we got the speed here. Speed is 344. They gave it to us. We didn't have to calculate that. Uh, we're looking for lambda 3. And we have the frequency of, what, 750. So lambda 3. Lambda 3 comes out to be 0.46 meters, 46 centimeters. And by the way, before I even finish the problem, I know that the fundamental frequency is 250 here. Because 3 times 250 is 750. They didn't ask you that. But I have 
Oh, I'm going back over here on the left now. 0.46 equals 2 thirds times the length of this pipe. So if I take, solve that for, you know, basically multiply by 3 and divide by 2, I get um, L equals 0 0.69 meters. Does that sound right? 0 0.69 meters. 3 Something's wrong. No, I think that's right. I think that's right. Okay. Lambda 3. So L equals 0.69 meters. So there we go. Determining the resonant, resonance length of open tubes. Uh, understanding that resonance is a match when two things match in frequency. Beats are when two things are close to matching in frequency. And uh, with resonance you can do uh, some interesting things. You can break glass, you can collapse a bridge, you can well play instruments and if you have beats you can tune instruments. So a lot of fun things wrapped up in uh, resonance and beats.